I'm Lisa Pickering and welcome to CITV's Press Talk. Here's the most recent news and information from the government of Bermuda. Good morning everyone here and good morning Bermuda. Uh, today we have come together to do a press conference, myself and Minister Pat Gordon Pamplin, uh, on our prospective ministries concerning the throne speech that was read out this Monday gone. Uh, in relation to public works, I'd like to go through the five uh, 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 highlights that we have put in the uh, throne speech and then entertain questions thereafter. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, good. Uh, as you know, uh, we continue within public works to be responsible for the infrastructure of the island. What we have attempted to do this particular uh, throne speech and for the upcoming year is to highlight certain areas that we feel would be uh, socially advantageous to the community, uh, things that we believe that uh, the, the area constituencies have been looking for. And so highlighted in the five areas are number one, uh, White Hill Field, as we mentioned, we are looking to put a community center there. Uh, two, we are looking to upgrade bathrooms. Those bathrooms will be upgraded at many of the uh, uh, um, uh, beaches uh, with the uh, new beach economy strategy coming out from the BTA. Uh, this will also include other beaches as well, not just the highlighted beaches by the BTA. In addition to that, we are continuing with the surplus of government properties, looking at selling off some of our properties that have become derelict that uh, we feel that are no need for us going into the future and uh, seeking out opportunities to put that out to the public. Uh, also, we are looking at how we uh, can sustain growth for small businesses. One of the things that Public Works is responsible for is uh, a lot of contracts go out from us, uh, and many times they go out to small businesses. We are now tracking uh, these small businesses and looking at a policy and ideas on how we can continue to track that to improve and to get more uh, of our small businesses involved with government uh, works. And in addition to that, lastly but not least, uh, we're looking to uh, demolish the uh, Devonshire Recycling Facility. Uh, many of you know that this is over, over uh, um, in Devonshire there. It has been the subject of the media yourselves with uh, many of the recycling bags that are there. We will be clearing that area for the community and putting up uh, basketball courts and the likes for the community so that they have a social area to gather together uh, to enjoy. So those are the highlights coming from Public Works. Um, and I guess if I were to go into detail, I can open it up to questions. But for the first one, I will go into a little more detail and that was the White Hill Field Community Center that we are looking to put there. We were uh, fortunate enough to uh, continue co discussions with WETCO uh, under the leadership of Andrew Diaz, and we were made aware that he, could, he had three uh, facilities, uh, the homes that were put together, these prefab homes, and one of those uh, he has made available to us, and we thought, well, what could we do with it? And uh, this goes off of how we have uh, been looking at White Hill Field with the Department of Youth and Sport as well. Um, this is a, a highly used, widely used field, but it is not of international standards. And so what we are seeking to do here is to get that field to an international standard so that it, not only can it entertain local uh, sports, but international sports as well. So the Department of uh, Youth and Sport is working very closely with us. The um, uh, area representative for the OBA, uh, Senator, she has, uh, she has been uh, on us. Uh, uh, and looking to uh, get a facility built there. So I'm glad for the, uh, 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 I was going to say pressure, but the, the insistence that we do something there as far as a community uh, center is concerned. So we will be looking to work on this very closely. This year gone, or during this year, you know that we put bathrooms there to upgrade the facility, and this is all to get it to an international standard. So with that in mind, I'll entertain any questions you have. Morning, Minister. Um, in terms of selling off properties, do you have any idea of what those properties, um, which ones those are at this moment? Yeah, we have identified 30 properties. This came out uh, back in June, uh, this year gone, um, and uh, <clears throat> we identified 30 of these properties. We are seeking within this fiscal year uh, to at least get uh, out to the public maybe eight of those properties. You would know that back in uh, June of 2015, we had uh, put Harrington Sound out. That's, that was a test sample for us to see what the community and how it would respond to putting something like that out there. 
I will highlight, though, to say that this is the first time in decades, I don't think there's anyone in Parliament uh, right today that uh, was around when a property had been sold by government in this manner. Uh, so we are looking at uh, uh, policies on how we put these properties out, some maybe for residential, some for uh, nonprofit organizations and the like, but 30 properties. The government also said you were committed to paving 10 kilometers of road. Uh, do you have an estimate cost on that and where you intend to generate the revenue for that? Yeah, I don't have the cost figures uh, right at hand right now. Uh, but if you look last year, we made the commitment of 10 kilometers as well. So it should be in the budget. Uh, I'll take a look at that and get the information to you. Uh, my PS can provide it for you probably very shortly. Uh, our commitment, again, is 10 kilometers. Uh, that is quite a bit. Uh, we did fall a bit behind in this fiscal year uh, because of maintenance issues, uh, challenges with the facility, uh, but we are seeking to, we've got about four more kilometers to finish uh, by March, and so we're looking to get back on track with that. Just one last question. Um, the issue of trash trucks breaking down was uh, mm -hmm. resurfaced a lot last year. Yes. Um, any plans to upgrade or replace those damaged ones? Yeah, that's a, uh, that, that could be a lengthy discussion. Um, with the financial constraints that we are under right now, we've not been able to uh, purchase new trucks. Uh, there are challenges as far as maintenance is concerned. I can say that the maintenance team uh, and, and the, the facilities guys have been working overtime to ensure that we have sufficient trucks. Um, but there is a challenge uh, with an aging fleet uh, and with the fleet that was purchased back in, I believe, it was 2011, 10, somewhere around there. Uh, there is a challenge with those trucks. They are now getting older. Um, and um, so we're seeking out how we can better maintain these trucks, but it's not always easy. I am um, very happy that our teams have done well with what they have done so far in maintenance. Thank you, Minister. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, you're in charge of parks, your ministry, sir. You don't mention Southside or the public concerns over the Botanical Gardens, which is going to mm -hmm. come up again tonight. Um, what can you tell us about Southside? Okay, Parks now falls under Minister uh, Cole Simons. Uh, it's no longer uh, under my remit. Oh. So you can, you, <laughs> you can forward those to him. Yeah. All right. Uh, one thing that was not mentioned in the throne speech is the causeway. Yes. Uh, can you give us any updates on any work plans for that bridge? Uh, there's two. Which, which one are you talking about? The Longbird Bridge or the, the Swing Bridge? Uh, the Longbird. Long, Longbird Bridge? Well, uh, you know that um, that bridge has been there uh, for quite some time. Uh, it was a temporary measure. Uh, what I'm looking at right now is finishing off Swing Bridge. We want to get that in full operation. Uh, it'll be restored back to two-lane traffic before Christmas this year. That is our, our goal. Uh, and then we can look at uh, concentrating on what we do with Longbird Bridge. But that is a far greater plan that may involve uh, the airport operation as well and what we do there. My goal right now is to get Swing Bridge operational, and then we can focus on Lone Bird thereafter. All right. Um, the other issue I had was regarding um, the roadworks down by Birdhouse Hill. Uh, what's the progress on that? Yeah, one of the challenges you saw in the media, one of the challenges we had there was working with Belco. They wanted to put the lines on the ground. It became an extremely expensive uh, uh, project, and so our work stopped to figure out what we were going to do going forward. Uh, but I anticipate that will be finished very shortly, soon. Good morning. And again, um, following on from my previous colleague, um, we, are look we looked forward to having this throne speech delivered this year. And we do have an ambitious agenda that has been included in this throne speech. And obviously, I'm going to speak to those issues that, neg that uh, directly impact the Home Affairs Ministry and looking for how we can enhance the quality of life for our people. So you will note that in the throne speech, the, we looked at how can we strengthen our families and extend the principle of equality and fairness in the workplace. Now, what we look to do, it indicated that the government will study the matter of parental leave to include maternity, paternity, and adoption leave. And you might ask, well, why is this coming under home affairs? Well, we do have things that impact on, on labor, and therefore we have the Labor Advisory Council, which actually is the nucleus of the department in dealing with labor issues. So this is an issue that will be put to the Labor Advisory Council 
uh, we will um, confirm the structure around which they will be operating in this regard and the terms of reference so that we can have these discussions in a meaningful way. I think it's very important from a social perspective to strengthen the family structure and to make sure that we have uh, systems in place where people can feel comfortable, that if they require time off, um, that it's, it's structured and that it is supported by government policies. So that's something that will be explored on a very in-depth in and detailed uh, manner in order to be able to accomplish that. The other thing that um, we have to make sure of is that our young people, that our children are not disadvantaged because one parent or another fails to meet its parental obligations. And so, of course, we need to ensure that our children have the best possible opportunities with the parents taking responsibility for their, um, for their children. Um, we also have within the Ministry of Home Affairs the Department of Workforce Development. And you will know that um, we have had a requirement. It's been brought into legislation quite a few years ago. And actually, in uh, uh, 2004, we had the National Occupation, Occupational Certification Act, um, which included skills and competencies that were required for current and future construction projects. What we have done is to actually enhance what happens within the Department of Workforce Development to ensure that that we have national certification. So for specific industries, we, in order for somebody to be able to hold themselves out as competent in a particular area, they are required to have certification. So what will happen is that um, in order for anybody to get a job in those particular um, areas, and specifically I'm going to speak to electrical, and I'm also going to speak to, um, and I'm totally missing it here. Um, there's another one that I wanted to speak of. It'll come in a moment. But in these particular areas, what will happen is that in order to be able to be certified, we will have the standards, we will have conditions set, we will have a curriculum set so that people coming into, and it's landscaping is the other one that I wanted to think about. But when we wanted to, um, in order to, to qualify and to be certified, you will have to be able to satisfy the terms and conditions of the curriculum. And then once that certification is obtained, then those people will be deemed to be competent. With those competencies, then um, consumers will be able to satisfy themselves that they are getting a quality person to do a quality job. What's interesting with that is that there are times that a lot of those areas require work permits. And obviously, as a government, looking out for the, the employment of our people, it's important that we ensure that as many Bermudians as possible are able to get jobs in their country. So in terms of looking at work permits for specific industries, we will be minimizing the work permits that are issued as much as we possibly can to be able to enhance the ability of Bermudians to be able to be employed. And in so doing, looking at that, we will ensure that if somebody is coming in and requires a work permit in the absence of the ability of a Bermudian to fill that job, uh, we will make sure that that person also has the national standard certification before they are able to apply for a work permit. What will happen is that the Department uh, of Immigration will be working in lockstep with the Department of Workforce Development to ensure that even before a permit is applied for, that the applicant has met the standards uh, that will be set out by the curriculum and by the certification process. So I think that's something new that I think historically we kind of had people coming in and there was really no real measure to say that this is a prerequisite before you can get a work permit. Well, now the Department of Immigration will be working in lockstep with the Department of Workforce Development to ensure that the, that system is put in place. And I think that that also, by having a set curriculum, having a training officer to uh, ensure that the standards are set and then to have enforcement officers, that helps to ensure that our Bermudians also qualify at a level that may minimize 
increase the necessity for work permits to be issued. And I think I'm looking forward to that. Just anything that will help us to ensure that our people are put back to work and that they do that um, you know, effectively, efficiently, and trustworthily so that a consumer can know that if I call an individual that that person is certified and qualified to do the job, that has got to be the ultimate aim. And that also enhances what happens with respect to our people being put back to work. We also are looking um, through this period of time, um, you will know that we had a, a consultative group to look at immigration reforms. And we've had some challenges the early part of the year. And what had happened at, coming out of some of those challenges and questions that people, that the populate populist had of the government is to make sure that we methodically went through the immigration processes and that whatever was put to the public was going to be something where it was able to be embraced by the public. So we have the Immigration Reform Working Group that has, was formed as a result of the March um, differences of opinion that existed. They have worked assiduously and they had the obligation to look at how they would handle uh, Adoption, first of all, they did that bit in their negotiations. They actually brought legislation to Parliament, and we've passed that legislation. So if you're talking about uh, adopted children, that matter has been resolved. They are now working on the issue with respect to mixed status families, and those negotiations, they're actually going, uh, those discussions have uh, taken to the public uh, airwaves and, and public venues. So they have had town hall meetings, which and the most recent of those were last Last week in which the public had the opportunity to give their input, their thoughts and ideas as to how we address the issue of mixed status families. And this is a situation where you may have one child who has the right to have Bermudian status, another sibling may not, or a parent and a child, you have those differentials. And obviously, the whole situation with respect to immigration and immigration reform is always a vexatious issue. And we have to be able to approach it and address it in a sensitive kind of way. So using the um, reform committee, the consult consultative immigration reform working group, they have been driving these initiatives um, with, obviously, with support from the government. They report to us on a weekly basis, so I'm always in the loop in terms of the progress that they are making. One of the other things that they will be looking at as part of the original agreement that came out of their being set up in the first place was to look at the issue respecting PRCs, that's permanent uh, resident certificates, as well as granting a Bermudian status for long-term uh, residents who have been here for over X periods of time. They have not reached that stage of the negotiations as yet, so there's nothing that I can report to you to say that this is the stage at this moment, but what what I can say is that they are continuing to work on it. They will give recommendations. I do know that in the original legislation that was tabled um, in March um, that there were recommendations or, sorry, there were um, conditions that were put in that legislation. That has actually been taken away and the reform group will be looking at it and they will come back with recommendations. So to say, would it be X number of years or would it be, you know, that somebody is here for PRC, will a PRC get status, will status, you know, up, be obtained after a certain period of time? All of that is still to be negotiated. It's still to be put to the public and we're still having that feedback before their final recommendations are made. So we're not quite there, but that is part of what will happen because with their recommendations, Recommendations, we will have their recommendations either looked at and assumed within the legislative process so that we can uh, have legislation that would um, reflect what is appropriate coming out of those negotiations. So that's the one of the things that we're going to do. And then um, another issue that we're looking at is to amend the Rent Increases Domestic Premises Control Act. And what that will do, we have to look at striking a balance between rent control, the rights of tenants, and the need to ensure that there's a fair economic return for landlords. And I think what seems to have happened thus far is that we some of the issues may have been skewed. And 
might think if you're a landlord, you think that I've been, you know, left hanging out to dry. If you're a tenant, you're thinking there's no protection. And I think the importance is to um, make sure that we liaise and coalesce around the issue so that ultimately we have a policy and legislation that is appropriate in those circumstances. So I think those are the major areas that we are looking at. Obviously, we want to, we'll have some new legislative guidelines around uh, trademarks, patents, and designs that will uh, be able to bring our standards in line with international standards. And that's being worked on by the Registrar General, uh, Mr. Pennyman. And, uh, you know, so we will be looking at his recommendations for legislative changes to be able to embrace those in the construct of the legislation that we provide during the course of this upcoming year. So it's ambitious, but we are quite excited about the work that we are required to do to enhance the lives of Bermudians. Okay, back to the floor. Um, was the debt collection um, situation on your docket too? Well, it's interesting with uh, debt collection. It's it's you know we're talking about having cross ministry um, responsibilities because you have to look at where like I don't have anything in my legislation respecting debt collection in terms of the times that the debt collectors can go and, and be able to approach people and knock on doors and things like that. Yes, that 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 obviously will come under our remit. I thought you meant in terms of you know w whether we're going to be the ones taking people to court for debt collection and stuff, which comes under a different ministry. Sorry, I was just, I, I did miss that highlight. But, um, you know, I think that what we want to, what we want to be able to accomplish as a government is a community and a society where we can live together, work together in a harmonious relationship. And I think there are things that happen that are perhaps are not quite as balanced as they might be, and we want to make sure and put these things in balance. So nobody wants anybody knocking on your door at midnight or calling you, at, you know, in the middle of a Sunday uh, church service to say, you know, I'm calling you and you didn't pay your bill and you were supposed to come here with your fifty dollars or whatever. We don't want that. So we want to make sure that there are rules and regulations surrounding how people can um, make those collections and make it appropriate. You must have we we certainly have had. Minister, I, I have a. I just want some clarity on the um, certification scheme, um, especially when it concerns work permits mm -hmm. holders. Yeah. Clearly, when an employer mm -hmm. applies for a work permit, they already think that person is qualified. What checks are going to be done exactly to make sure that there is they do have the? Is it, is it going to be an equivalence type of comparison of their qualifications? with what we require, or do they have to come to Bermuda and actually get the national certification? Is that Well, ideally, when somebody makes an application for a job, they will be able to indicate what their qualifications are. That is a prerequisite. So you apply for a job, you have to know that at least you have certain competencies in order to have that job. We have, <coughs> excuse me, so that's, that's a given that if you're making an application that you ought to be qualified. However, a qualification or certification that you might have in your jurisdiction may not be standardized with what we expect for, um, for our jurisdiction. So when somebody comes in and they say that I have gotten X certificate wherever I live, they will make sure that they will be able to go to the workforce development to make sure that what the curriculum requires, that they have met those competencies. That will be determined before the application is able to come to the board for the board to be able to opine on whether it's appropriate to give that certification. And I just wanted to highlight that there were other two other categories as well. It's landscape gardeners and uh, electricians, which I mentioned earlier. There was also auto mechanics and welders who will also form, uh, form a part of that category. So um, <coughs> I'm just trying to understand why that work can't be done in advance because in many, most countries, Western developed countries anyway, there are standard professional qualifications mm -hmm. for things like electricians, etc. So can't we just in advance figure out which ones are equivalent to the national certification? You know? Makes it easier for people, uh, you know, applying for work permits, doesn't it? That does, and I and I take your point. Here's where we ha here's what the situation is: is that at the moment we had not we did not have what those standards were. We have now we're now putting those standards in place. 
obviously, as an initial exercise, we want to make sure that the standards are there so anybody applying will be able to meet those standards. The look at equivalency um, is probably is going to be step two, so that we will know that before anybody comes, it's like, don't even bother to go make an application because, you know, if your hometown qualification doesn't meet the standards that are set out by the Bermuda legislation. That's the key. I think the um, National Training Board have worked assiduously on this particular issue. They have, um, we've identified the individual that will put forward the curriculum to ensure that these areas are dealt with and that the um, requirements are standardized. And then once uh, we get through the initial blush of making sure that it's that the process is working well, then obviously we can look at making it a little bit more um, comfortable, I guess, easier um, before somebody comes, when they make their applications, what is the level of equivalence? Those are things that will come in time. But you have to actually set your nucleus and set your standards initially. And that's what we're in the process of doing. All right, final question. Um, you mentioned that this legislation has been in place for a while now. Um, your government has been around for four years. Why, mm -hmm. how, why is it taking so long to protect Bermudians' interests like this? Why is it taking so long to... To put this thing in place. Well, let's just say that it, it has been put in place, but not in as formal a way as it ought to be. Um, the National Training Board have set out the, the wish list, as it were, and obviously I would like to... We have not had the personnel we had some challenges in that respect to make sure that the system is put in place properly. Now we've made that commitment to doing so. Um, bear in mind that when you have policies that come or legislation that's required, there are times when it takes a little while for it to be um, up and running and to get all the tweaks and, and you know all of the challenges worked through. The National Training Board, under the chairmanship of Jeff Souza, has done an absolute yeoman job. They put out the National Training Plan Part 1. National Training Plan Part 2 is ready uh, to go, um, which they, they will be putting out uh, very shortly. There were some tweaks that were required to be made so that we can ensure that we didn't have a plan that had, let's say, as an example, financial implications without ensuring that the finance ministry were on board with things like that. So when you have an independent committee working, you can obviously look at wish lists and then see how we can accommodate those wish lists um, in the construct of what we are, you know, uh, what we have to do in government. So we're working on those things. And obviously, it's easier to say, oh, that's been in place and you could have you could have done it. But I believe that at times it's a little bit better to just pause and do something well than to do it just because. And I would like to ensure that at the end of this process, it is done well, that Bermudians are not disadvantaged, that they will have the opportunity to be certified with a, an acceptable qualifying standard, and that in the absence of Bermudians, and I stress, in the absence of available Bermudians, we will then have the opportunity for foreigners to be able to apply for those jobs. Good morning. Uh, in terms of collecting arrears for child maintenance, uh, how much is approximately <coughs> owed? Do you know? I, that I don't know. Um, you know, that's a situation that I think the Justice Department will probably have a better handle on, and certainly the Finance Ministry would be able to respond a little bit better, probably even the Justice Ministry, but I don't have a handle on the amounts. Uh, whilst you can't comment specifically on individual immigration cases, um, how long does the immigration appeals process normally take? It depends on what um, is being appealed. Obviously, um, you have the Immigration Appeals Tribunal, which sits on certain immigration issues. You have some issues that will come to the minister uh, for appeal, and you may have certain processes that may have to come back to the minister. So it just it's all very subjective. And as I said, you can't specifically mention cases, but those are the avenues that are available. And uh, with the idea of stricter rent controls, et cetera, uh, was this uh, sort of uh, introduced because of the America's Cup? 
coming up next year? No, I think the Consumer Affairs Bureau have been looking at this legislation and how to enhance protections for both landlords and tenants, and this is working through that process. Certainly, America's Cup coming up next year um, may have heightened the awareness of some of the issues that may have arisen, um, but I don't think this legislation is not geared towards any one particular event. Um, on the subject of uh, qualifications and work permits, um, is this being brought forward because um, work permit applications have been put in for people who are, do not have Bermudian level qualifications? No, what's happened is that what we haven't been able to do is to capture historically the fact that this person's qualification is appropriately standardized to what will be required. And I think that in the absence of having that curriculum to say that this is what we require, your uh, qualification that you got from wherever is equivalent, then we just want to make sure that that, well, that's the reason it was put in place. And we just want to make sure that people who are coming in, that there is no ability for them to slip in. Um, you know, if I'm an accountant, I'm not going to apply for a job as a landscaper if, I have, if I've had no landscaping experience, just because, you know, somebody might like the idea that, you know, I may be reasonably intelligent enough to do something like that. So it's not being done, you know, it's being done to make sure that we, our systems are standardized and that anybody who's applying, Bermudians and foreigners, meet those qualification standards. That's the intent. Now, just uh, springboarding off the uh, immigration appeals issue, um, your predecessor had promised that a, a that appeal tribunal decisions be published online. Uh, we've not had a single appeal decision published since August of last year. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, is there any reason why there's a backlog? Or ultimately, have there been no meetings? I was just going to say, I have no clue if there are any outstanding. Um, you know, if there's something that's outstanding, uh, you know, if, if it, an appeal has to go to the Immigration Appeals Tribunal, it would have been it would have been referred and it would have been dealt with. And if the rule is that it's um, put online, then it would have been put online. It's quite possible there have been none. All right. And uh, the final question would be, and we've heard some complaints regarding um, the time it takes to process the status applications and work permit applications. Mm -hmm. Is there anything being done to expedite the process? Well, let's just say that um, when I came into the ministry, one of the things that we tried to do was to get a handle on the workload that was required. Now that that has been assessed, we are able now to measure what is able to be done, what can be completed in any given time frame. I think there has been uh, there have been delays uh, in processing certain things. We have put measures in place in order to create efficiencies within the department. So. We're looking at bettering the interaction between the department and the public so that everybody's happy at the end of the day. And we want the work done. Finally, could you give us an update on the unemployment situation? Is there a trend? Have we shown any changes in the last year? I don't know statistically. Those are things that I would have a better handle on when we get to budget time because those are the things that we kind of focus on during that period of time. Um, anecdotally, there have been some job losses uh, in certain industries. Whether those people have been able to be absorbed in other areas, I'm not 100% certain. Obviously, within um, when I look at the work permit applications that come through, um, there may have been a slightly different approach in dealing with work permit applications, and that is to scrutinize them extremely intensely to make sure that what is being asked for is not able to be provided from our local workforce. So we've been very, very astute so on that. The upkick in tourism, the upkick in, in, in construction work. I just wondered if there been any um, compensatory um, increase in, in jobs for Bermudians. I'm sorry. So we've um, had an upkick in tourism, mm -hmm. and we've had an upkick in construction over the last six or seven months. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any definitive signs of in increased jobs for Bermudians? I would think yes. Um, in fact, I do know that the Morgan's Point um, construction is going is ongoing, and they have a significant number of Bermudians up working up on that site. I know there have been some specific other projects, and obviously we have ready for shovels in the ground. Um, in short order, hopefully, um, the, the East End Hotel and things like that. So we will definitely start to see the fruits of the, the labor 
um, for the things that we've looked to bring down the pipeline. So um, this is, I've well, just been um, reminded um, with respect to the, um, the workforce development and then the assessment of, of capable Bermudians, um, eligible Bermudians. So the, the process would be that they'll go to the Department of Workforce Development first and they will assess and then identify whether there are any Bermudians. We do have within the Department of Workforce Development the job board. So, and it is a, it's an extremely important tool that if people are looking for work, they can actually go to job board, determine what jobs are on offer, and put their resumes out. What's also very interesting with that is that whenever a work permit application comes to the department for consideration, attached to that work permit application has to be the results of the job board search. So it's important for people to utilize job board for their best advantage. So then after uh, the, the electricians and welders, um, which is, this process is already in place. So they'll go to workforce development, they will be assessed, and then they will identify if any Bermudians are available. They will then come to the immigration department. So it goes to workforce development first, then they come to the immigration department. And then the act requires that they will have three months within which to apply. And then that will be a condition on their work permit. So in other words, if for whatever reason um, they come, we have to make sure that the certification is appropriate and that will be a condition of their work permit. So if you don't get it, you won't work. Have to leave. If you don't get the certification, you know, and, and which speaks to your point earlier that ideally this is done on the front end so that you don't have somebody coming, moving in, and then finding that you can't qualify. But until we get the entire process in place um, and make sure that it's working smoothly, we will say to somebody, if you haven't caught it, I'm sorry, you can't stay in this job. That will be a condition of your work permit. And that's the way that works. Thank you for coming. You've been watching Press Talk on CITV. Join us next time for all your recent news and information from the government of Bermuda. I'm Lisa Pickering.